So most people think that Sunfloor is bad, but it's actually an absolute beast. Just kidding, it, it really is horrible. It has pretty abysmal stats, even with a decent 105 special attack, and it's 30 speed, even with its chlorophyll ability when it's in the sun, it's just not super fast. Fun fact though, since it doubles actual stats, if you're running timid max speed, in the sun it's actually faster than things like Walking Wake. If you're crazy enough, it can get some type of damage off with solar beams in the sun, paired with fire type weather balls for its defensive checks. Earth power can catch people by surprise, but for the most part, if you're looking for a sun sweeper, literally any other option is better. But as a sunflower enjoyer, I put this bad boy to the test. Look, using Pokemon like this is one of my favorite things, just because it's like, yeah, they're outclassed by many other Pokemon, there's really no reason to use it, but then it's like, if you win, then they lost to a Sunflora, and that feels even better. So, if that sounds like some fun to you, you should definitely consider subscribing, I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. With that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so first note, my opponent has an extremely scary team, they have basically some top threats, and I have some sun and some flowers. So I do decide to lead off with the Swampert here as they're gonna go Argelodon. And it's like, I do not need any staples removed today, please, thank you. So they actually just go right for the Dragon Pulse turn one, does a little less than half. And the Ipert is here to just kind of spread some rocks around. And uh, I'm kind of looking at this matchup thinking how much you know, do I really need Swampert? It's a great check to things like their Sneasler. But at this point, some nice chip would actually be really good on Archaladon. This thing can definitely be a menace. And I decide I'm just going to go right for the Earthquake here. I, I figure the damage is going to be good. It'll do over half. Plus, I'm not really worried about that thing getting stamina boost after I get some solid chip on it. So I do allow for another Dragon Pulse here. And that kind of uses up Swampert. But I'm able to at least do a ton of damage. Uh, to the bridge boy and it also gets that stamina boost which shouldn't matter because now I can it's easily in range for like a weather ball from Sunflora or some general shenanigans like that. So at this point Swampert is probably not going to do a lot here. I'm slower than everything. I decide to just kind of let this thing go down to a Dragon Pulse but I feel like I did what I needed to do in setting up that Stealth Rock. Got some chip on the guy and now you guessed it. It is time to get the sun going. Hopefully the SPF 50 is popping in the crowd because it's about to get sunny out here. So I decided to go into the Nine Tails just because I have both a good matchup on the Archaladon and also I need the Drought to be set up. So, Sunlight turns harsh and at this point I have kind of no reason not to just go for a nice little Fire Blast. I'm thinking I'm going to be able to do, you know, a good amount to if they do want to switch into a check here or if they stay in and just die. So, I do go for that Fire Blast. It is going to connect. That does take care of the bridge and that thing is not going to be doing some crazy stamina body press bullshit today so that feels good and at this point we're at a nice little 5-5 match so they now decide to just go into the palafin and i figure you know they have to basically bring palafin in and go for a either a switch or just a flip turn to be able to bring that thing back in in its crazy ass superhero mode so i decide now to just go right into the leafeon what that's going to do is Make them, kind of force them into a decision on what they want to do versus a Leafeon. But they actually just go right for the hard switch rather than the flip turn. And they're, in fact, going to bring in the Skeledurge, which is actually quite bad because I am one little leafy piece of kale, and that is a fucking fire crocodile. So I decide just to go for the knockoff. Now, the reason is because I want to just get some chip on this thing. If they do over predict and go for something like a Shadow Ball, it puts me in a great spot. But instead, they are just going to go right for that Torch Song, boosted by the sun and I am burnt to a damn crisp. So Leafeon kind of gets used up there for nothing, um, but I did get some, at least some good chip on the Skeletor Dirge, because as I'm looking at it now, Sunflora is able to actually grab a KO here with things like an Earth Power. So I bring in the greatest Sunflower of all time. We are the two frames per second goat, but also we first person shoot now here, because I can just fire off an Earth Power there, and that actually takes care of the Skeletor Dirge. So, you know, Leafeon died so that Sunflora could Sun Flourish, and that, is good because Skeledurge is annoying as an unaware mon that is generally just bulky and uh, you hate that damn thing. So now this allows them a revenge switch into a Sneasler. Now Sneasler ordinarily I could just go right for an earth power here but I'm thinking either they have a Terra but more importantly they're probably going to go for a fake out which is then going to activate a normal gem which then uses up the item gives a thing on burden and it's a real quick guy and that actually easily outspeeds Sunflora under you know, Chlorophyll but uh, I decided to go into the Grafaii. I figure I can take the fake out here and I have a nice little plan. So they do go for that fake out 
it is going to activate the normal gem, which uses up the item, therefore doubling this thing's speed. And Buddy is out here zooming. So with that, I can actually go for an Encore. And since I'm Prankster, hey, dude, I do not give a shit how fast this thing is. I'm able to just go first with that. And now they are locked into Fake Out. And the reason why that is important is because now... Uh, not only are they unable to attack for the next few turns, but also since they used that normal gem, um, they are not going to be able to have Unburden the next time they switch in. So that feels pretty solid because that thing's probably adamant. And without Unburden, a Chlorophyll sun for Sunflora actually does outspeed it. So I now just decide to go for the parting shot just because it's like they obviously have to switch. I can then get myself a nice little position while in the process dropping some offenses. So as they bring back in the Superman-ass Dolphin, this thing's going to have to take that attack drop. And I can also decide a matchup here. And you know who matches up great against damn near everything in the game? Sunflora. The absolute beast comes back in, and Sunflora under some chlorophyll is going to be able to cause a little bit of a ruckus here. I'm just going to go for that solar beam. If they want to switch, it's going to do a good amount to whatever. They are going to save the palafin. And they're actually going to go into the superior here. Now, superior can definitely take a solar beam. Uh, but after a little bit of stealth rock chip and a beam, it's not going to be feeling super healthy. So I just go ahead and absorb some light through my weird bulbous belly and then absolutely just blast his ass, which does do over half, which feels pretty good. And after some life orb damage, the problem is the sunlight fades away. And that is unfortunate because if the sun stayed up, I could outspeed and then surprise his ass with a fire type weather ball. But that's the is the name of the game when trying to play chlorophyll nonsense. So I decide I'm just going to go right back into Ninetales. It's an obvious switch here, but with that Heat Rock, I can just come in, guarantee that I can get that Drought to stay up for the eight turns. And uh, Superior does not have much. It can go for a Leaf Storm to get that contrary boost. Uh, however, I can just bring back in Sunflower and then outspeed. So I kind of have a pretty good situation as long as I can maintain the Sun here. And uh, they go for that Leaf Storm, doesn't do a whole bunch of damage. And the problem becomes now, what do I do with the Ninetales? I kind of just am free to just go for a Fire Blast. Uh, the Stab Fire Blast, boosted by the sun, it hurts a lot. And uh, no one really enjoys taking it. They're just going to go ahead and switch out. I considered predicting the switch into the Palafin and then going for the Solar Beam, which turns out would have been a great play because they do just go right back into the Palafin here. I do at least connect on a Fire Blast. I consider it just does damage anyway, and it also rolls for a chance for a burn. However, it does live, and at this point, I'm thinking, well, I outspeed this thing, unless it wins a speed tie. However, it does just have the jet punch, which um, is just going to be priority, and takes care of me even through the sun, because Palafin is pretty damn nuts. I'm not going to lie, this thing hits real damn hard. But the good news is, once again, Sunfloor is free to switch in. And while this thing's not switching, hard switching into stuff, at least revenge switching is working out for the fella. So I can, at this point, just go right for another solar beam. I really should have probably clicked... Uh, the Giga Drain here, because they do go for that Jet Punch, which gets, gets a little bit of chip. Uh, again, it's reduced damage by that Sun, so I knew I could take it easily, and I just go for that Solar Beam. I Basically, using Sunflora, you're just clicking beams to try to get as much damage as possible. Uh, but a Giga Drain there would have at least got me a little bit of health back and kind of negated some Life Orb. Uh, but regardless, seeing Sunflora kill some shit is just fun in general. So, now they get a Switch and whatever they like, and they are going to go back into the Sneasler. So, again, Sneasler does not have the opportunity to go unburdened here. However, I am worried that this thing is going to bust out a Terra Flying to just float above my Earth Power, and so I'm going to do myself a little bit of scouting. I'm actually going to go ahead and switch out here, and I'm going to go into the Slitherwing. Now, the reason for that is because I was surely thinking that this thing is going to go Terra Flying, and uh, I want to ensure that <laughs> Sunflora... I can make stuff happen. So as I come in, I get my Predosynthesis boost, which is nice, and they now just go for that Dire Claw. They actually do not go for the Terra, and that opens the situation where it's like, hey, maybe I guess they don't have the Terra flying, and now Sunflora does have the matchup after this, but I can now just go for that uh, first impression just to get you know, as much chip as possible. With that Choice Band and the Attack boost, it actually does a reasonable amount there, especially with the Crazy Resist. And now this thing finishes me off with the Acrobatic. So... At least with the intel we have, I know that this thing is not working you know, with the, the ability to avoid an earth power here. And since it's an unburdened Sneasler, these things are always adamant. Meaning, Sunflora in the sun outspeeds and then I can go for that earth power. And that definitely takes care of the guy, which is amazing. Sunflora killing a Sneasler may have never been done before. So, <laughs> and in the process, we did it by looking badass. So... They are now down to two Pokemon left. Now they have the, uh, the Superior, and they have a Grimmsnarl in the back. 
So here's my plan. Now, Sunflower is the win condition at this point, which is hilarious to say, but also, there's only one turn left of Sun, and while I can use that to just outspeed and kill the superior, I realize one of my best options might just be to go into the Grafaii here, knowing that I can take an attack from this thing easily. I can then go ahead and set up the sun and potentially knock this thing out with a poison jab and then still be able to poison jab the Grimmsnarl in the back, which then opens the door for Sunflora to outspeed under the sun and then solar beam the freaking Grimmsnarl. So that's the plan. Now I bring in Grafaya here. They just go for a Giga Drain, which is fine. I am specially defensive, so I know that I can take that pretty easily. And now it all comes down to can the dynamic duo make it happen. So I'm just going to go for the sunny day here. I realize there's probably nothing that the superior has that can end up knocking me out here. So I just go ahead and bring back out the sun and say, oh, you thought the tanning time was over? It is certainly not. So they just go for another Giga Drain here, which is perfect because at this point, now this thing is just kind of a sitting duck. They have no switch into a poison jab and a poison jab also should be able to just knock this thing out. So it is getting a whole bunch of health back with the uh, both Giga Drain and the Leftovers, but it's mostly fine just because now I can poison jab his ass with my weird painted long sticky finger. And uh, as I do take that Leaf Storm, which is fantastic, now I do get that jab off and that takes care of the superior. So now I have enough sun turns left to where Sunflora can definitely come in and do some big damage. Uh, with a solar beam or a weather ball against the Grimmsnarl. And also, I should be able to get a nice little super effective poison jab off to put this thing in range to where Sunflora can do it. If this is just going to be a light clay screens Grimmsnarl, it can get a screen up, but it turns out it actually is going to go for the Sucker Punch, which is wildly surprising because 9 out of 10 Grimmsnarls are always <laughs> just going to be like dual screens and spirit break and just not Sucker Punch. So Sucker Punch in that situation definitely ruins the plan because now as I go into Sunfloor here, uh, the only thing I can really do is just hope that I can somehow <laughs> leave a Sucker Punch and I have been hoed by this guy being more creative than anybody else with the damn Grimmsnarl. Sucker Punch is definitely underrated and honestly unexpected on a guy that looks like he'd be sucker punching anyway. But I just decided to go for the Terra Fire because, you know, Terra Fire uh, boosted Weather Ball in the sun is actually my best damage here. Uh, but they're actually like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and Terra myself. We both saved the Terras for the literal last turn and I was really hopeful that uh, Sunflower was going to take this one home for us because this thing's been clutch as hell, but with the Terra Dark, it's just going to boost that Sucker Punch even further and absolutely gonna go ahead and knock the seed out of uh, my sunflower. So that is gonna be the end of the game, but honestly, I respect it because this was not the average dual screen Grimmsnarl, which I've come to hate. And that is gonna be the end of the game. And regardless, that was still a really good match, and I'm proud with how the, the team did, with even you know some misplays here and there. Still a fun game. And that is gonna bring us into match number two. So one of the things that I've realized in testing this team, considering using solar power on the Sunflora, I was like worried that chlorophyll wasn't going to be fast enough, but it does actually, it outspeeds thing that you'd be surprised, uh, especially just being max speed invested. So with that chlorophyll, this thing's a freaking protosynthesizing beast, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. So this time my opponent's going to go ahead and lead off with the Rillaboom. And so that's not a great sight to see considering I lead off with the Swampert. I'm freaking allergic to this damn gorilla. And I should probably get my ass out of here. I really want to try prioritize getting my Stealth Rock up. However, it's not worth just going down turn one to like a wood hammer. So I decide it's in my best interest probably just to switch right into the uh, Ninetales. Now, I'm actually not super mad at seeing Rillaboom on this team because that's actually going to help out a bit with like Life Orb Chip. It's also going to boost damage on my grass moves. And uh, I'm going to try to take advantage of that as much as possible. So I decide to switch right into the Ninetales here, thinking that there's a chance that they just go for the U-turn, uh, turn one. But they actually are just going to go straight up Grassy Glide, and that is not going to do a whole lot of damage. So at this point, I'm just trying to think about what they have to switch into this. And while I do want to go for the Will-O-Wisp here, I kind of consider maybe they switch into Embor. So I'm just going to go for the classic Fire Blast and just do some damage to whatever they want to bring in here. So they're actually going to go into the Terrapagos, and... This little weird, my little pony looking ass turtle is, this thing's kind of a problem. Because if it does Terra, it then activates the, it like takes, it gets rid of weather. I don't know. This turtle's weird, man. I just go for the Fire Blast. It comes in, it distorts a type matchup, which makes it Fire Blast do nothing. And uh, Crazy Turtle is kind of a problem. So I'm not super familiar with what this thing's coverage is, but I do feel like Slitherwing can come in at least and take an attack. 
and then fire off uh, a nice little super effective close combat, especially you know with the choice band paired with the protosynthesis boost in attack that we get, not a lot wants to deal with that. So I'm gonna bring right in the Slither, looking absolutely huggable as hell out here. Is Slitherwing the most cuddly new Pokemon? I, it's gotta be. So I come in, get that attack boost, they are just gonna go for the Earth Power, and that is not gonna do much to us, especially after we can just soak up a nice little health uh, from that grass, we're feeling pretty damn healthy here, and I'm thinking I'm just gonna probably go for uh, a close combat, but then I'm thinking, hold on a second. They're actually gonna switch into a Petra Runt on that close combat, and then I can actually make a double switch and get Sunflora a matchup there to where then I can surprise it with an Earth Power. So, thinking ahead there, they actually just stay in and go for a Zen Headbutt. We got a nice little mixed attacker drop a ghost, which actually doesn't even do half to the Sunflora, so. I don't know, if this thing's not Terrid, I feel like it doesn't do anything, and then especially if you're doing less to half than a sun, to a Sunflora, you should probably reconsider, but that's kind of great, actually, <laughs> I do take it super nicely, and at this point, I'm just going to start blasting, so I'm just going to go ahead and fire my lasers, and go for that solar beam, as they're actually going to go ahead and bring in the big angry uh, pig, so... As I go for that solar beam, it is boosted by the grassy terrain, keep in mind, and especially with that life orb, that's going to do enough to be a nice little two-hit KO. I'm thinking, ooh, this thing, yeah, buddy probably thought he switched into this, but it turns out you do not that easily, because I also, as the grass goes away, I have the coverage with the earth power. I'm just going to go for that earth power now, considered saving it um, for you know, the surprise against like the Petra Runt, so try to get super effective on that, but I realize I'm just going to take care of the pig. And Sunflora killing fire types is the, my favorite thing ever. So down goes the Embor, which is fantastic. And now they're actually going to go right back into the Rillaboom. So with Rillaboom here, they probably see my coverage as Solar Beam, Earth Power. Uh, but they do not know that I have a nice little, little secret up my little leafy sleeve. I'm going to go for the Weather Ball here. I can easily outspeed as long as they don't Grassy Glide, which I would be able to take anyway. But these Fiery Balls are going to take care of the Rillaboom. So that just straight up Oko's the guy. And listen, Sunflora is a damn threat out here. This thing is new meta. <laughs> and I also now get to retain that benefit from having the grass around. So that feels pretty good. Now, as they decide to go into the Alolan Golem here, the problem is I wasn't able to set up my Stealth Rock. And that means that this thing sturdy is intact. And I want Sunflora to be beastly even further. So rather than just going for that Solar Beam, knocking this thing down to sturdy and then dying, I actually decide... I have no reason not to just kind of switch into the Swamp Bird here. I can take any attack a Golem wants to throw at me with his weird, crazy-ass beard. And um, Swamp Bird also then has an opportunity to set up that Stealth Rock for later. So, on the Switch, they actually decide to go for the Meteor Beam, which is kind of crazy. You don't generally see special attack in fellas of this nature, and uh, it is going to, in fact, be uh, the Power Herb Meteor Beam. So it gets the special attack boost, immediately fires off the Meteor Beam, but it doesn't, doesn't do anything because... I am a Swampert, so that's kind of fine because that means that now, you know, this thing probably doesn't want to stay in here and then it kind of loses its power herb and then its special attack boost and I imagine that's probably there for the sake of surprise, but color me not surprised. Well, I guess kind of, but regardless, I'm just going to go for the Stealth Rock because I figure, you know, they probably have to switch out here and then meaning now the next time they come back in, they're not going to have Sturdy intact unless I guess the grass is still there to heal it, but... I'm just going to go now for that Stealth Rock, get that up, which feels good, as they actually pivot into the uh, Sylveon. So, Sylveon in this position is able to set up on me. They're going to go for that Calm Mind, and that's kind of scary. As I actually click Earthquake, I figured it was going to do a bunch of damage, but then I realized, fuck, there's grass on here, and that actually reduces the damage from Earthquake. That's one of those effects that Pokemon doesn't tell you. The grassy terrain reduces damage, I think it's like just from Earthquake. Not even ground moves in general, but Earthquake. So that doesn't do much. And now they take this opportunity to set up a second Calm Mind, which I kind of felt like they were going to do. I mean, there's no reason not to just kind of go all in on these Calm Minds. So as I go for the flip turn, I'm able to get a nice little chunk of damage, but also, you know, with their last move being that Calm Mind, I have the perfect answer to that. And that is going to be our good fella, Young Finger Pain. Now, this thing, any Unburdened Mon with the ability to Encore is such a good insurance policy on being swept. And this thing is just a really good pivot option and fits well on this team. Because I can just go for that Prankster Encore and I could be like, hey, that Calm Mind was actually real cool. I'm going to need to see you do that one more time for me, Butter. Actually, a nice couple more times. So now they're locked into Calm Mind. And at this point, you know, they have the option, the option to switch out here, which is why also Parting Shot works really well on this set. So... 
I decide, you know, with the threat of the poison jab, I'm like, hmm, should I just, should I just jab the guy? I'm just gonna go for the poison jab. Uh, they don't have a lot of great options, and they do actually just stay in, and that takes care of the Sylveon. So, nothing better than watching a Sylveon get up to plus three and then not be able to do anything with it, and that feels pretty solid. So, now they get a free switch back, or not free, they get the nice little revenge switch back into the Alolan Golem, and this time, I'm just gonna go for that parting shot. Now, I do have the ability to go for that sunny day, but with Grafaii not having the heat rock, it's not gonna stay around for as long as I would like, so... The parting shot is a good play in that being able to now just allow me to go right back into Ninetales and it is going to get nice and droughty up inside this fucking crazy cafe. I don't know how the sun is shining through in this cafe, but it is because now that drought comes up and I figure I probably just go down to an earthquake here, but they actually heavy slam, which is, this thing's confusing. I don't know what buddy's cooking with the, with the Alolan Golem over here, but I kind of fuck with it. So this time I'm just going to go for the Will-O-Wisp. Now I kind of just want to get in the Sun Flora because I'm feeling like the Flora <laughs> can come in clutch even further in this. So as I go for that Will-O-Wisp, it is now going to allow it not to be able to do any damage with physical attack, but instead they actually go for the curse. And as uh, they, this thing's rocking with a power herb and a special attack and then curse set, I don't, this, this thing is the most confusing Alolan Golem. I've ever damn seen, but then again, I'm working with a Sunflora, so it's like I'm confusing too. Now, also, I do in fact have Encore on this Ninetales, and I kind of hate to do it to the guy. I <laughs> it's a real dick move, but I go for the Encore again and lock this thing into Curse, and they're probably like, what the hell is going on here with the Encore? They honestly yeah, considered a different moveset on this Ninetales, but the fast Encore is just still, it's needed on this team to try to get myself positioned with Sunflora at least. So. As now they're stuck into the curse, I'm thinking now I can just bring right back in the flora. I also could have just easily gone for the solar beam, but what I say to that is, what's the fun in that? I can instead bring in sun flora, and this thing is about to be shooting. So as I come in, they just decide to stay in and curse again, and uh, it does not matter how much defense and attack you're going to have if the sun flora is over here dancing all crazy with my cool little pedal arms, and especially... You know, with that burn damage, you are not going to have any friggin' sturdy. And now, I'm just free to start beaming. So, only half their team is gone at this point. I guess now they're down to two after the solar beam is going to come and absolutely destroy this man's life. And Encore has struck once again, as <laughs> that does take care of it. So, the pair of mons that they are down to is going to be that Petcherunt along with the Terrapago. So, as I take some Life Orb chip there... We grab our next victim, and now in comes the Petaron. So this thing is a little bit of a goofy mod in that uh, an Earth Power looks like it's close to being able to grab a kill here, but then I realize in the sun, if I'm actually able to commit the Terra Fire, a Terra Fire boosted Weather Ball uh, is going to be enough to knock this thing out. Unless for whatever reason it's specially defensive, which generally these things aren't. I think it's like base 88. So it should actually grab a kill here. Now I go ahead and light the Sunflower on fire because now we're Sunfire. And uh, this thing is kind of ridiculous with that, but of course I do outspeed because I am super quick with my little pedal legs. And a weather ball is going to hit him with a fire one, and that does take care of it just because of that sun boost. And so being able to knock that thing out in one hit cleanly is extremely satisfying. And after some life orb chip, now their final Pokemon is going to be that damn turtle and this thing has just been kind of confusing this entire time they are going to bring it in here and it's actually in range to where i'm feeling like um, a weather ball should actually do a great amount of chip not quite grab a kill here but i'm just going to fire off the weather ball anyway and now they decide to bust out the terra now i figured they probably were conserving this thing early to consider tearing something else but now they realize yeah i should probably just go for this terra here because now it goes full crazy crystal Thing. I don't even know what the hell I'm looking at here, but with that it has Terraform Zero, which fades my harsh sunlight, which also harshes my damn vibe, because now I lose my chlorophyll, which sucks, and then this thing's able to go for the Terra Star Storm, and that is going to be able to kill the Sun Flora. Fun fact, Terra Star Storm I think is only super effective on other opponents that are Terrid. Not that it matters there, because Sun Flora dies to a cool breeze anyway, but down we go sadly, and we do not complete the full body bag, however... At this point, all I have to really do is bring in the Slitherwing, and as I'm looking at it, yeah, this ter this turtle, I always forget, but it's it's very slow. It has basically no speed, and Slitherwing can come in and slither our way into a nice little W by firing off the close combat here, because it does seem weird that this thing's a normal type. Does it not? I don't know. I just beat the hell out of the turtle, 
like a damn plastic straw. And that is going to be the end of the match on that one. So also, I apologize if the audio was any weird at any point in this. I, it wasn't synced for some reason on my recording, which is annoying. Um, but that's going to be the end of it. Now, with that, it was kind of a ridiculous game. So I'm going to hit you with one more bonus match. And let me tell you, you should definitely stick around for this one because this is one of the most insane matches. So, uh, looking at the squad here, they have some kind of, they have a great defensive core with the Blissey and the Corviknight, and this is going to be a little bit of a tough one to break. So, let's get into it. Also, if you've stuck around for this long of a video, definitely make sure you hit that like button. It really does help out the channel, and I do appreciate it. So, as I lead with the Swampert, once again, I met with a different grass starter. And I'm like, why the fuck do I keep leading with this Swampert? He's pissing me off, and I realize I probably just need to switch into the nine tails here. Uh, it's more than likely they go for a U-turn, but if they just want to go for a flower trick, we're gonna be in a pretty good spot. So we're starting off the drought early, as we got a nice little game here on the beach, and uh, they do decide to go for the U-turn, which is unfortunate because now they get a matchup versus the nine tails, and maintaining nine tails is gonna be—it feels like a little bit tough here because I definitely gonna require to have that sun up quite a bit. And as they have a direct answer like this, this freaking Blissey kind of ruins a lot of plans here. Now, looking at their team comp, I figure this Blissey probably comes in and just sets up the Stealth Rock. So I'm just going to go for an attack here uh, because I want to be able to Encore that. And I actually clicked Solar Beam on accident. I think I meant to click Fire Blast, but instead, I mean, nothing is going to do any damage on the special side anyway. Because this thing got a big-ass booty. So they do go for that Stealth Rock there, and staying in on this was uh, kind of the point because now I can just go ahead and encore that and then just lock them into the stealth rock and then allow me to try to get a position to uh, switch something in. Now, the problem with this is trying to break their wall core, right? Because while Corviknight I do have answers to in the form of like weather balls and fire types, I, they can just easily switch in and special sponge the hell out of everything you know, with this with this Blissey. So there's gonna be a little bit of a pain to deal with and that's just basically the damn struggle. I've been Wi-Fi battling for 15, 16 damn years and Blissey has always been annoying. So I decide now they are definitely, so they're locked into Stealth Rock and surely they're gonna go ahead and switch here. And they also probably imagine I switch and it's just kind of like, I'm gonna bring out the absolute goat, the boy Herbert. And uh, Leafeon is in a position here where with that chlorophyll I'm faster than everything and they actually decide to stay in and go for another Stealth Rock. They probably just realize, you know, these Ninetales can't touch me. And so I just stay in and see what they wanna do. And what I do is just bring in the boy. So I now decide to go for the Swords Dance here. It kind of completes the pair of chlor Chlorophyll fellas on this team where I can hit things with the physical side on this. And then Sunflora has got the special side covered. So as I go for the Swords Dance here, they decide to bring in Skeledurge. And then I realize that was kind of a bad idea because this asshole is gonna be unaware and it's just a whole damn thing. But I need to try to get some chip going if I wanna make stuff happen, so I decide to go for the Terra Fire. I'm thinking there's a pretty good chance they're gonna go for something like a Will-O-Wisp here, and Terra Fire is super useful on this Leafeon, especially just because, of course, then I can't be burnt, and then also it covers for if they wanna just Torch Song, which I should be able to live. And then, you know, at least getting the knockoff is gonna be good because you're gonna see what this thing's working with. So the knockoff, gotta do a nice little chunk there, do get rid of this thing's boots, Imagine just smacking a dude so hard that you fling his boots off. And <laughs> I think that's a that'd be a fun sight to see. So Scout Dirge takes half from that, but then also does go for that torch song, which actually it activates my mirror herb, funnily enough, doesn't really help me out at all, which is annoying. But at this point, I already got rid of their item, and a knockoff without an item is not gonna be able to do enough damage. So I'm like, well shit, my Leafeon plans have been foiled once again by this guy having a crazy stally ass team, especially with the unaware of freaking Skeledurge paired with his walls. So, I just decide to go right into the Swampert, and they actually, of course, go for that slack, uh, freaking slack off. This thing just out here slacking off on the middle of the beach like it's a damn day off, and uh, it's annoying, because now, while I did get rid of this thing's boots, it's just back to freaking full, and I'm just gonna go for the flip turn here to maybe see if they potentially switch, and then I can grab myself a nice little, nice little position here. I think they're probably worried about an earthquake, but instead, they're actually just gonna go ahead and go for that Terra Water. Now, while well, that generally does suck in this situation, I'm kind of happy to see that at least they're going to commit the Terra early, just because uh, now I don't have to worry about any crazy type changes later. And they are, in fact, carrying the Will-O-Wisp, and that is going to be able to burn the Swampert. So that kind of sucks, because Swampert being burnt here, now I'm going to be able to, you know, not flip turn my way out of a damn wet paper bag. Does absolutely nothing, especially with the resist. And now, at least the good news, again, about Skeledurge going Terra Water, is that it is, in fact, going to be weak to... 
uh, grass now, which is good because I am a grassy fella and I got myself a sunflower. So as I bring the sunflower in, I have not been maintaining sun turns and it turns out the sunlight fades as soon as I bring it in. And I'm like, well, God damn it, I am hurting here. I <laughs> decide uh, it's kind of fine. I can just go right back into the nine tails just because Skeletor doesn't really have much to you know, hit the nine tails with. And also I kind of threaten it with a solar beam of my own now that it's gone Terra Water. So it's like, yeah, the Terra Water worked out for him against the Swampert, but it actually does generally help me out against uh, a lot of my other threats. So as I go Nine Tails, they're actually going to go ahead and make a switch of their own, and uh, they're going to end up uh, getting that freaking Skeletor out of here, which brings in the Corviknight. So this is a matchup that I'm totally fine with, just because I figure, hey, I can roast and toast this guy, but then I'm like, well, that's the problem with this guy's team comp, is he just goes right back into Blissey here, takes a Fire Blast like no problem. So I'm actually going to go ahead and predict the switch into Blissey, and I'm gonna bring back in the Leafeon. I'm hoping that they're gonna go Blissey here because that's kind of the matchup we wanna see. And especially now that Skeledurge is water type, it's not a great answer into the Leafeon now. So as I bring this thing in, I do take some Stealth Rock Chip, but they do actually make the switch that, they, that we expect. They do go bla uh, back into the Blissey here, and um, this thing is not gonna be greatly appreciating the physical moves here. So. It's a risk on whether or not they just go for a seismic toss and kill me here, but I decide I need to try to make some aggressive plays uh, to beat a damn team comp like this. So I decide to just go for the swords dance here, and they're actually going to bring in uh, the Hatterene. So as I dance with some swords, I am looking ridiculous with swords and chandeliers and shit all around. And uh, this thing at plus two is definitely not going to be able to take a solar, bl solar blade. I just bust out a damn lightsaber on his ass. And I think this move is hilarious. It's basically, imagine Solar Beam if you just instead used it as a sword. And <laughs> that is going to take care of that little fella there. So that thing didn't really have a huge role in this match anyway. So it's kind of a decent sack there. As now, this is going to allow them to go into the Quacko Ball. So problem with this fella is a lot of the time they're carrying priority in the form of Aqua Jet. And that is exactly what this thing is going to do. And uh, Leafeon... If I was able to grab a kill there, it would have would have been positioned really well in the remainder of this match, especially with that Swords Dance. But of course, the priority does come and ruin my day, just to, especially because, you know, I'm freaking, it was fire type. So, now, I do still have my work cut out for me. The Blissey is still freaking healthy, and uh, I'm running out of sun here, but Sunflower still looks like I could get, get myself a spot here. So I decide to go into the Swampert here just because I'm thinking they probably don't really stay in against this. They're going to have to close combat really if they want to do decent damage as I am kind of physically defensive, but they're actually just going to go for the Swords Dance and I expected a switch and went for the flip turn. So that is a bit of a misplay on my end, which is unfortunate. However, uh, this duck really isn't that big of a problem and that is because I, once again, have the greatest Sunflower of all time. I can just go into the Sunflower right here and we don't care as much about an Aqua Jet, of course, because of the sun, but also we're grass type. So I can just outspeed the guy, go for the solar beam, and if they wanted to switch into Blissey, yeah, it would just be annoying. So they do actually stay in. They don't want to. They want to waste the solar or the sword stands here, and instead they have to uh, get absolutely blasted straight to the damn beak by a sun floor. So that takes care of the uh, the dance and duck peacock, and that is pretty damn good because that was also a, a pretty massive threat. Now. They're going to bring in Corviknight, and this is exactly what I was kind of hoping for because I can outspeed and go for that Weather Ball. It is going to turn into a Fire-type Flaming Ball of Fire. <laughs> fire it right at his face, and that's going to take care of it. And seeing Corviknight go down like that is actually perfect because now uh, their cores are st starting to get whittled down, and Sunflower grabs himself two nice little kills there, which is um, pretty solid. Nobody, for some reason, expects the, uh, the Weather Ball uh, from this beast here, so... What does suck is that the sun went away. So as they bring in the Meowth's Karata here, it is gonna be faster. I think if it's Jolly, it's actually faster than me anyway, even if I am chlor uh, chlorophyll boosted. But uh, I just decide I'm gonna go right back into the Nine Tails here as kind of just a sack here as I obviously take that Stealth Rock. But I do get the Drought up and we kind of get to see what the kitty wants to be working with. So they're actually just gonna go for that knockoff. It's gonna transform into the Dark type, gets rid of the Heat Rock, which doesn't matter because I had it when I set up the sun up anyway. So I do have the eight turns of sun and to see if we can make some stuff happen. So looking at the remainder of the match. Now, one of my win conditions is really feeling like the Slitherwing. And as you're going to see here, I can go into the Slitherwing. And this thing is here to just be a nice little little wall breaker. With, uh, with that Protosynthesis attack boost paired with a choice band, 
having the ability to go for a stab first impression, it just does huge damage. And uh, I'm just going to go for that because, of course, this thing is dark type. And I do not really have a whole lot of switch-ins to this. So I'm going to try to see if I can take advantage of that. The Slitherwing pairs nicely on this team just because it also benefits from that sun. And the first impression is going to do a bunch of damage to that Skeledurge. Now, it doesn't do a whole lot, but then I'm thinking if they want to slack off here, I can just encore that and uh, just do some general, you know, Grafai shenanigans. So I bring this thing in. He looks like he's flipping everybody off right when he comes in, which I think is funny. Um, but as I'm floating in the air with my balloon, they do just go for that Torch Sun. Again, it's going to be boosted uh, by the sun, but I'm trained to be special defensive on this uh, Grafai. Anyway, so I know I can at least take it nicely. And I really just need this damn Skeledurge to not stay alive here. So, as my game entirely glitches out, sometimes when I'm playing, half of my screen goes away, which is really weird. But I decide to go for that parting shot there. It's going to bring the special attack uh, down to normal. And I kind of just realized, mostly, that uh, this is a good turn for them to just go for that slack off. Uh, and as I can potentially go into the Sunflower, who has the great matchup against the Water-type Skeledurge, the problem becomes, then freaking Blissey just easily comes in and tanks that. And boy do I hate having to deal with uh, having a special sweeper when there's a Blissey around. So I just go right back into the Slither Wing. The game is still broken. It, it does come back. This happens all the damn time to me for some reason. But they are going to slack off because Buddy's got the most annoying team. And it's been kind of fueling me to try to, <laughs> try to beat this this entire time. So... I'm just going to go for the close combat. Looking at Wild Charge, I don't want the recoil. And also, I think Stab Close Combat is going to do more. And with that Protosynthesis boost and the Choice Band, it just cleanly knocks out the Skeledurge. So with that thing gone, that is going to open up some opportunities for me. And uh, the Slitherwing, again, looks really nice because being locked into close combat, uh, Blissey obviously has nothing to deal with me. And neither does uh, the Meowskarata, really. As Meowskarata can come in, I did take a... Uh, defensive drop there and I'm kind of worried about that so I figure saving this thing for a first impression is kind of my best bet here and at this point I just need to go ahead and try to make a sack switch now I decided to go into the Swampert here the reason for that is because it's either that or really the Grafai but I'm thinking the Sun is gonna run out here eventually and I can definitely use that thing to set it back up and then just enable the Slitherwing to ensure that I can get kills that I need so I just go into the Pert here Turns out they're actually going to go for the triple axle over uh, the grass move, of course, versus, you know, the uh, the Slitherwing. But with the defense drop, if it hit three times on Slitherwing, I'm pretty sure it grabs a kill. It actually only hits me twice there, which is fine by me. Again, this Swampert kind of is in a bad spot because uh, being burnt, I cannot, again, I can't do very much damage. I'm out here just being, being useless. I'm just a, a damn noodle out here. And I just decided to go for the flip turn, as I'm thinking potentially they switch, but also flip turn just covers for allowing me to just go right back into the Slitherwing. And they are going to go ahead and bring in the Blissey. Now, Blissey doesn't like physical attacks, but it does like them if you're a burnt freaking Swampert, because that's not going to do much. Um, but that is mostly perfect. Now, there is one turn left of the sun, I believe, at this point, And this is going to allow that nice little opening for the Slitherwing to come in. And we are out here just slithering around all damn day. And uh, the Stealth Rock... It's starting to stack up here, but I'm not planning on taking attacks with this thing anyway. So I feel like that's kind of fine. Now, I do get that attack boost again. And of course, their two Pokemon is literally this Blissey and that Meowskarata back there. And I'll tell you what, we are in way too deep in this match to let this one slip out of my fingers. So I'm just going to go for that close combat that kind of checkmated here on that uh, Blissey has to get that damn egg cracked. And we're going full scrambled egg today. And that is going to knock out the Blissey. So, again, I do take a defensive drop there, which is unfortunate versus the Meowskarata. But then also, the sunlight is going to fade. So, I know that definitely I'm going to need to switch the Slitherwing out and then come back in with just a first impression. And we also know that this thing's only damage here is really going to be, or at least coverage, probably only going to be the, um, the uh, Triple Axle. So... I'm going to go ahead and go back into the Swampert once again, which is going to function as, uh, kind of the same as last time as uh, just a nice little sack switch. You didn't get sacked before, but I'm like, please kill my Swampert. I swear to God. I also don't know. I feel like this, uh, this Meowskarata is like scarfed or banded or something like that. It seems to be uh, choice as it goes for that ice, uh, freaking triple axle. This time it only hits twice again. I don't really know how the hell triple axle works, but it doesn't say it missed the third one. It just sometimes only hits twice, doing me a real confused. Uh, but uh, after some burn damage, I'm definitely going to be able to go down to that next one. 
and then I have myself a spot to let Slitherwing slither our way into a W here, at least, hopefully. You never know what the hell's gonna happen. So, I do go for one more Axel, or I guess three more, as it does hit that third time. Takes care of the Swampert, which is like, sweet Jesus, finally. I've been waiting for this Swampert to die all damn day out here. <laughs> Once it got burnt, I think it was just a damn liability. So, here's the thing. Well, I can just go into the Slitherwing and uh, go for the first impression. This thing is currently, it's ice type. And I'm thinking, that just to ensure that I grab a kill here, I can go into the Grafii and just set up a nice little late game sunny day. The reason why I do that is because I swear to God if Slitherwing didn't have enough damage to grab the kill there, I lose the game and I would be very sad. So I do die to a triple axle, which is fine, uh, but setting that sun up is a nice little insurance policy and that now I can just go right back into the Slitherwing and then just go ahead and, uh, again, just soak up some of that sun. Enjoying the protosynthesis out here is going to give me that clean little attack boost. This thing is, it's a very fun, it's a very fun mod just with the choice ban and first impression does a lot to even resist and everything. So I get that attack boost and now I don't care how ice type you are, a first impression is going to be able to take care of it. And sweet Jesus, that is going to be the end of the game. So super long one there, um, but that's just like the play style of this dude's team and we were able to slowly find a way around it. So, and listen, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I really do appreciate you. You're the actual MVP. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you next time. Peace out.